Okay, hello and welcome back to part two of this series. Um, in this video what we're going to be doing is dealing with the message, uh, sending the message to the player and also broadcasting it to the server. And we are also going to be, um, well I'll demonstrate just now the reason we need to add an extra event. Um, so if I just go back to the game just to demonstrate the problem, you can see that I have disabled the plugin and placed a TNT block and given myself a few levers. Now if I just place a lever, plugin is re-enabled by the way, I should just mention, if I just place a lever and ignite, or you know, turn on this lever, the TNT still ignites, because all we've done is check the block place event. We haven't added anything to check to see if the, um, um, you know, check to see if TNT on the server already ignite, is already ignited. We haven't got anything to catch that case. So that's what we're going to add just now, so I'll just log out of the server. And we'll go back to our code. And actually, I will just stop the server if I just type it in the right window. Uh, okay. And then I'll go back to our code. And then what we're going to do is add another event here, which is going to be the um, explosion prime event. And that is triggered when um, a TNT block actually explodes. So what we'll do is add another event handler. It's going to be public. It's going to be void. It's going to be called on explosion prime and it's going to have the explosion prime event passed to it as before and then that will most likely need to be imported or spelled properly or both so let's just check to see if the event has been cancelled if it has we'll just return and then we need to check to see if it was actually a TNT block that has been primed because creepers also trigger this, and I believe gas fireballs, well I assume they do because they explode, um, but yeah, so we need to make sure that it's actually a TNT block and not something else. So the way we do that is by checking to see if the entity, so we can get the entity from the um, event, like so, if that is an instance of, i.e. sort of one of, a TNT primed entity. Uh, TNT primed is just a block of prime TNT, you know, the flashing white thing. Okay, so I'll have to minimise this list actually because that's getting rather long. Okay, so if it is a TNT block or a, you know an ignited TNT, we can just set, uh, set the event to cancelled, like so. And now if I uh, go back to the server, and I will need to disable the plugin. So let's just go to our folder and into the plugins folder, and we'll just delete this. I'll just start up the server and I'll place a few TNT so that we've got some to test with and then we'll test with them. Yep. Okay, so that should have started by the time I click it. Nope. <laughs> Every time. Communication error. End of stream. Okay, I'll just be patient. Um, it does appear to have loaded, so let's try one more time. There we go. That's more promising. Okay, so now we've got the big hole, so if I just place a block over here, and a few here, obviously they'll work at the moment as normal, because we um, haven't... If I put one there, will it trigger those two? Hmm. I guess we'll find out in a minute. Okay, so that's those placed, so let's just log out, and we'll export the plugin um, to cancel the primed event. So now, if we just restart the server, stopping server, starting server and there we almost go if it ever loads loading loading there we go so let's log in and now the plugin is enabled so if I just place a few you should see that they get cancelled which they do eventually anyway and then I will try igniting one we'll do this one first and you can see that it does appear to ignite but it shouldn't actually blow up Oh, okay, it did. That's not quite right. What happened there? Oh, okay. I'm a fool. I forgot to actually register the event. So there you go. There's something actually kind of useful. You always need to have this above your event, otherwise they basically don't work. So we want to register this at the same priority, so we'll just copy that down and go for a re-export. So this is why I placed a few, because I usually get these sort of things wrong. <laughs> just careless typos nothing major. Don't worry about that. Anyway, restart the server again. Wait for it to load again. And we'll then we'll log back in. 
Why are there ten people on my server? Oh, we'll deal with that in a minute. Anyway, there we go. Back online. So let's try placing a few, and they're cancelled, which is good. So let's try igniting that. It appears to ignite, but it shouldn't actually blow up this time, which it doesn't. So there you go. And we can do that for all of these, and I should be able to stand right here, and there should be no problems. Yep. Um, I think the flashing entity might just be a client side thing. Um, you'd need to get someone else to help you test that. Okay, so yeah, that's basically that. So, um, yeah, that's almost it. There was actually a bug with the previous version where if you placed a TNT block next to an ignited lever, like so, it ignites like it did just then. It appears to ignite, but it would actually explode. Uh, that was actually a bug with Bucket. Um, just an event case that they hadn't caught, I guess. But that's been fixed now. In fact, I think it was fixed quite a while ago. But, um, yeah, there you go. Right, so, um, what I'm going to do now is go back to the code and we'll add the sort of messaging, I don't know, stuff. So let's go back to, well, actually, let's just stop the server first because I do tend to forget to do that and it takes a while. Oh, that was almost instant, but whatever. Okay, so if the event is cancelled, i.e. here and here, we want to tell the player... Um, well, here we want to tell the player they're not allowed to place TNT, which is fairly easy because we can just do event get player send message, which just sends a message to this, that player in chat. And then in here we can write something like um, you are not allowed to use TNT on this with a space server. There we go. And you can also make this coloured if you want. So the way you can do that is by using the chat colour class. Um, for example, red is fairly fitting. And to do that, you just add them on like that, just how you would with a normal string. And that will make this appear red in chat. Uh, and then you also want to broadcast a message, which you can do um, using the server, sort of broadcast message thing. So the way you can do that is you need to get to the server, which you can do using the bucket main class, the sort of static one, like so. So bucket get server broadcast um, broadcast message, this one. And this will send a message to the entire server. So you can say, for example, um, I don't know, TNT blocked. Not really much, no, no, TNT block. Not really that much use, not much use but um, there you go. And you can also do things like log things to files and all that sort of stuff, but that's something we'll cover in future videos. Anyway, if I just join the server now, like so, and we'll start it up, you should see that we'll get, actually we'll get both of these messages, but um, everyone will get this message. So yeah. Okay, so let's just join the game. Five people now, that's odd. I'll <laughs> something clearly needs to be checked anyway so let's just ignite well let's place a TNT and you can see we get the message here you're not allowed to use a TNT on the server which is good and it's been cancelled however we also get the broadcast message TNT block which is not ideal um, and there isn't really a way around this except creating a custom broadcast function or method which is actually what we're going to do now so yeah so we'll just disconnect stop the server and go back to the uh, not game code and then instead of using the main broadcast thing here we're going to loop over all of the players and we are going to only send the message if um, if they're an op for example which is probably quite a useful thing to do so what I'm going to do instead of just um, doing get player here because we need to use the player to compare to each player on the server we're going to create a variable for this player so I'll just do that here. We'll call it. Actually, no, I won't. Actually, yes. Mm, yeah, I will. So it's going to be the type player. Its name is going to be player, and it's going to be equal to event get player. And then we can just use player here. Just a variable. There we go. So then we can do down here. We can use the for loop to loop over all of the online players, and we can get those players using the bucket class. So bucket get server not scheduler, server, get online players. So for each player, 
we can check to see if they are that player. So we can do if online player equals player. So that's the player there is the player that plays the DNT, and online player is the player you know one of the players in the list of online players. And if that is not true, i.e. that, we can send them a message. So we can do online player send message and then we can do um, player get name for example just placed DNT like so and that will send um, this message to everyone on the server except the player that placed the TNT. So if I export this uh, we can't really test it because there's only one of me but I can show you that it won't appear okay so wait for that to load and there we go so let's just go to here okay and if I just place a TNT block you can see that I get you are not allowed to use TNT on this server however if there was another player online you could um, uh, they would see the other message which is which would be wide load just place TNT. Okay, so next thing I'll show you how to do, in case you want to do this instead, is how to send a message to all operators. So here, instead of using if player equals player, you do if player is op. So you just test here to see if online player is an op. So the way you can do that is by doing if online player, really simple this one, is op. Bucket provides an is op method. So if is op is true, send the message. So that will now send this message to all operators, um, which I can actually test. So we'll export this, and we'll go to, um, where will we go to? We'll go to the server, and we will stop it, which I forgot to do, and we will start it, like so, if it ever loads. Okay, there we go, and now just join and I can't remember if I'm an op or not, but let's place a TNT and see. Uh, yes, we are. Good. So you can see that I was not allowed to place TNT because you are, well, because it, I did. And now I got the broadcast message because I am an op. And you can also make it so ops are allowed to place TNT if you like, using the same sort of method. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything I think I wanted to talk about. Um, it might also be sensible if you want to do, to make play like, you can make TNT not drop. Um, obviously I can't place that if I show you, but yep. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much everything. So hopefully you found this useful, and thank you for watching.